When visiting Paris, it is practically essential to go see the famous Mona Lisa painted by Leonardo da Vinci and kept in the Louvre Museum. Usually, you leave quite disappointed for two reasons. The first is that the painting is very difficult to see properly due to the multitude of people who always crowd in front of the work. The second is that the most famous painting in the world is actually quite small. It's 77 by 53 centimeters. And it is natural that this should be so. It had to be a private work, not a public work. But why is the Mona Lisa so famous? Leonardo da Vinci was already considered a genius by his contemporaries. His paintings, which were very few, were studied and held in high esteem while he was still alive, and his fame has never been tarnished. He has always been considered an outstanding author, so much so that some museums even today attract the public with his works even if they only have a single drawing. Therefore, it is clear that the name Leonardo is enough for the work to be worthy of fame. First of all, let's clarify. Should we call it Mona Lisa or Gioconda? The name Gioconda comes from the surname of the person who commissioned the work to Leonardo. Tradition has it that it was the Florentine nobleman Francisco del Giocondo who commissioned the portrait of his wife Lisa Gerardini. The word Mona comes from the word Madonna, which could be translated today as My Lady. The Mona Lisa is then Mrs. Lisa Gerardini. Leonardo probably started painting it around 1503 or 1504 and would never hand it over to Giocondo. The work would travel with him first to Milan and then to France, where he would continue to work on it even as time passed. There are many mysteries and curious facts that surround this work. First, there is a copy that is in a private collection in Switzerland. The subject is the same, Mrs. Lisa, but the technique and materials are different. Called Mona Lisa of Isleward, it has been analyzed by numerous tests, x-rays and interpretations. Today, the critics are divided and the theories highly discussed. Some think that it was work of Leonardo, but others disagree, saying that it could be an earlier work later copied by da Vinci. In 2013, the international press reported that radiocarbon tests carried out on the painting by the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology showed that the cloth was made between 1410 and 1455. However, the date on which it was painted is not specified. There are several differences between the two paintings. Firstly, the one portrayed in Islesworth Mona Lisa is clearly a younger woman than the person portrayed in La Gioconda. On the other hand, while La Gioconda exhibited in the Louvre is painted on wood, specifically a poplar panel, Islesworth's Mona Lisa is painted on canvas. Purchased by collector Hugh Blaker in 1913 from an aristocratic family in England, he kept it in his studio in the London suburb of Isleward before shipping it to the United States for safekeeping during World War I. The work was acquired in 1962 by Henry Pulitzer and was later inherited by his partner Elizabeth Mayer in 1979. The painting was deposited in a Swiss bank from 1975 to 2003. When its owner died in 2008, it was bought by a consortium. In 2010, this consortium created an institution called the Mona Lisa Foundation that tries to prove that the painting was executed by Leonardo before the Gioconda in the Louvre Museum. But back to the author. One of the reasons Leonardo is famous is his pictorial technique. A great experimenter, he never stopped looking for his personal style. As he was not only a painter, but also a very curious person, he was very interested in people's bodies, in how we are made. He understood that our expressions are determined in particular by the mouth and the eyes. Thus, in his last paintings before his death in 1519, he deliberately made the corners of the mouth and eyes less well-defined. In this way, the Mona Lisa assumes that enigmatic smile and the look that seems to follow the viewer a phenomenon called precisely the Mona Lisa effect. 
There are even scientific studies that have analyzed the Mona Lisa's thyroid, saying that she could have a disorder in said gland or some metabolic deficit. Poor Lisa, she cannot be calm even more than 500 years after her death. Many artists reproduced it in their works, and there are countless pop interpretations that are already familiar to us, from Warhol to Duchamp, from Botero to Banksy. What would Mrs. Lisa think of being the most famous woman in the world today? With all this, we can already understand the weight of the attention that revolves around this figure. This interest has also turned into true hatred. On December 30, 1956, Bolivian Hugo Ungaza Villegas threw a stone at the Mona Lisa during an exhibition at the Louvre. He did it with such force that it shattered the display case and dislodged a piece of pigment from her left elbow. The painting was protected by glass, since a few years before, a man who declared that he was in love with it had cut it with a blade and had tried to steal it. Later, there were other incidents. On April 21st, 1974, while the painting was on display at the Tokyo National Museum, a woman threw red paint at it, protesting the lack of access to the museum for disabled people. On August 2, 2009, a Russian woman, stunned by the rejection of her application for French citizenship, threw a ceramic mug bought at the Louvre store, shattering against the glass. Fortunately, the oof was not damaged. Her most famous story, however, was the one we told a long time ago when we talked about Picasso's youth. The Mona Lisa was stolen in 1911, and the artist's father of Cubism was among the suspects. The reality was that an Italian who had worked at the Louvre, Vincenzo Perugia, convinced that the Mona Lisa had been brought to France by Napoleon, stole it and brought it back to Italy. Actually, Leonardo himself brought it with him when he transferred to Paris in 1516. It was a French king who bought it directly from Leonardo for 4,000 gold ducats. Perugia kept it for a little over two years and then contacted a Florentine antique dealer to give it to Italy. Of course, he was immediately arrested and the painting returned home to France. After passing through various French nobles, Louis IV took it to Versailles and after the French Revolution, it was given to the Louvre Museum. On occasions like the World Cup, animosities come to light and the issue of the Mona Lisa resurfaces. She's Italian, she's French. In 2018, to commemorate France winning the World Cup, the museum's official Twitter profile was Mona Lisa wearing the French national shirt, a true provocation. The Italians really went crazy with rage. But something is certain. The Gioconda is already a world heritage. It belongs to everyone, and we will surely continue to talk about it for a long time to come. Thank you, as always, for supporting this channel and see you next time.